My name is Micah. I work with gender-based violence programming in emergencies, and I'm also a COFAM member. So I'm going to be talking about why we think GBV programming should focus on women and girls, which is tip sheet two, uh, touching on violence against men and boys, tip sheet seven, and calling for uh, good coordinated efforts to address different forms of violence, which is tip sheet eight. So I guess to start, uh, we of course recognize that violence happens to men and boys, many forms of violence, including different forms of sexual violence, that we believe that the different forms of violence affecting men and boys don't have the same sort of underlying cause that violence against women and girls largely does, which is gender discrimination. And gender discrimination intersects with other forms of discrimination, including homophobia, heterosexism, and none of that is good for anyone but that in order to understand violence, it's important for us to understand the different roots of violence. And the different roots of violence allow us to see that uh, different people are going to be vulnerable to different types of violence, um, that there will be different likely perpetrators in relationship to perpetrators, where the violence might take place, as well as all of the consequences of the violence, the social, legal, emotional consequences and um, it's going to have a big impact on different people's access to services and their support needs. So I think once we understand those different roots of violence, the different forms of violence a bit better, that should then inform our prevention strategies. And different forms of violence are going to require tailored prevention strategies that are rooted in that analysis. So if we're asked to sort of paint all forms of violence with one brush, even all forms of sexual violence, we risk just not being effective. And we've seen that the evidence base around um, prevention strategies centered around a specific form of violence like rape have just not been effective. So, so for prevention, this is critical for us. And then also, likewise, looking at response services, it's very important that response services are grounded in an understanding of survivors' experiences and women and girls experience violence differently. They have more vulnerability to different forms of violence across the life cycle. And of course, again, they're going to face different consequences to the violence. The violence is understood very differently within families and communities. And all support services for both men and women, boys and girls, should be tailored to their specific needs. Um, and so within GBV programming, with our focus on the power structures that, that relate to discrimination against women and girls, it's really important for us that we see focused services for women and girls. That often means services that are exclusive to women and girls, service centers, because we know that globally these are the services that women and girls access more than any other service. When we see services that cater to all survivors of violence, child abuse, sexual violence against men and boys, those services are oriented from a clinical perspective rather than a rights-based perspective. And that can be important for clinical services, but we know that reporting to clinical services is lower than reporting to women and girl focused services. So we really think that it's critical to maintain that space and that focus. And women and girl focused services should be accountable to women and girls. These programs and services should be run by women and girls, run by feminist organizations, and also with an appreciation for the diversity among women and girls. So I think the intersections that we see are really important to highlight. We know that um, girls are already at, at least one intersection of two power axes, um, axes of oppression, so age and sex, big ones. Um, and then many other women and girls are going to be affected by other forms of discrimination related to disability, gender identity, um, sexuality, etc. So keeping all of that in mind, we advocate for an intersectional feminist approach, of course, to addressing GBV, violence against women and girls, but we also think that this is a really good approach to address all forms of violence because while all violence is not rooted in gender discrimination, most violence is gendered and these gendered norms that we live with are not good for anyone um, and an intersectional feminist approach allows us to do a power analysis that is useful for addressing all forms of violence.
And with that in mind, I think it's important that we recognize, you know, these, these distinctions that we see between the work that we do and the work that other actors do to address different forms of violence shouldn't be in competition or conflict because there's a lot that unites us. There's a lot of opportunity to collaborate toward shared goals. And that collaboration within communities should look like good coordination mechanisms, regular meetings to set agendas, set strategies, referral pathways, referral systems between points of service for men, women, girls, boys, etc. Um, and it should be also some collaboration toward resource mobilization because we shouldn't be fighting over one small pot of funding. We should be advocating together for more funding to meet the diverse needs of people affected by violence. And then I think separately, but collaboratively, we're going to be better able to meet the needs of all survivors.